Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Victor once again, and today we are at the University of East Anglia in the UK in search of masters and PhD opportunities. So if you've not subscribed, it's probably a good time to do so because I'm sure you'll be enlightened by the materials on this channel. So bring out your pen and paper as we search for fully funded masters and PhD opportunities at the University of East Anglia in the UK. Let's begin without any further delay. So the first scholarship we'll be looking at today is the Allen and Nesta Ferguson Scholarship. This name might sound familiar for a number of um, returning viewers and returning subscribers. Actually, this foundation, the Allen, Nesta and Ferguson, the Allen and Nesta Ferguson foundation or charity gives fully funded master's scholarships in about three universities in the UK. So I'll show you the participating universities and then return to the University of East Anglia. So the Alan Nesta scholarship is also present at the University of Sheffield. We've actually talked about this scholarship already on this YouTube channel. And this scholarship, by the way, is still on. So the Allen and Esther Ferguson Scholarship is still on at the University of Sheffield in case someone is interested. The scholarship is also available at the University of London School of Oriental and African Studies, as you can see here. So I actually made a video on this scholarship at Sheffield and at University of Leeds. So previously it was at Sheffield, Leeds and so on. And now we have a fourth university, that's the University of East Anglia. So they've extended their generosity to this university. So another, another opportunity for you in case you've not applied to another university or in case you want to apply to more universities in the UK. And there is no rule against applying for the same scholarship at Sheffield, at um, SOAS. I think that for the scholarship in, at Leeds is already closed, but you can apply for the opportunity at SOAS, at Sheffield, and also return to apply for the same opportunity at the University of East Anglia. So let's look at this particular one. So this is a fully funded scholarship for international students, generally from developing countries. You can see the eligible countries here on this list. It's a very long list and I've seen my country here already. And you can just scroll down and check exactly what it covers. As you can see, it covers international tuition fees and provides maintenance grants to live in the UK and to cover um, living costs travel and visa as you can see here and the deadline is on the 3rd of june 2022 but then you might think that the deadline is far away so you can wait till june but not so fast it's a two-way application process first you need to get admission into the university and then move to the to this page and apply for the scholarship so as I said, it's a two-way application process. First, you apply to this university, and then you come back to this page and apply for the scholarship. As you can see, it is fully funded and also covers maintenance. And there are three spots available. You might ask, only three? Well, you have this scholarship in other universities as well. You can also spread out your log and see which one falls through for you. And for this scholarship, you have to apply to the School of International Development, the School of International Development. And under the School of International Development, there are actually different courses. So different master's courses. You have Master's of Education and Development, Climate Change and International Development, Media and International Development, Geography and International Development. So choose one of these courses and see which one best aligned with your interest and with your qualification. So these are the eligible courses. You must apply for one of those courses to be eligible for this scholarship. So as I said, it's a two-way application process. 
you first choose to apply to one of these courses, check the admissions requirements and everything they require. And then, and then you move to this portal and apply for the scholarship because you need an admissions, not admission, but application number to apply for the scholarship in the first place. Let me show you what I mean. So I clicked on this button here and it took me to this page. So this is the scholarship application form itself, not the admission form, but the scholarship application form, two distinct portals, two distinct um, documents. So the first um, space here is for you to write your student applicant number. So you first need to put in an application. You don't necessarily need to wait till you get admission before you start filling this form. But immediately you get an applicant's number, you can start filling this form. These other info acquired here are normal everyday info, bio data, phone number, email addresses, and things like that. And the nationality and the rest. But then when you scroll down a little, there are two particular essays. One is based on your financial need. And it says you should um, say something about your financial circumstances. Why the second is about why should you be awarded this essay, be awarded this scholarship, I mean. Why should you be awarded this scholarship? So I've written a number of bullet points here that might guide you in your application. So let's go through them quickly. So remember we have other scholarships if in case you did not find your course among the ones listed. So the university has a scholarship page, a scholarship finder, where you can choose and select the scholarship best aligned with your interest. So you can stick around and we'll look at those together, both for masters and PhD. But let's finish this one first. So this essay wants you to write a 500 word um, document on your financial need, your financial circumstances. So these are just guides, by the way. You, can, you don't need to um, follow them verbatim, but these are just guides, tips on how to write a financial statement. So I think the first point you might want to clarify is how you've sponsored yourself so far, or how, you, how you've sponsored your education so far. So did you receive scholarships in the past? Did you get assistance from family members, from an uncle, from an aunt, from parents? Did you have to do many other jobs or something to sponsor yourself so far? Then let's come to the point of your current undertakings. Are you currently employed? What are you earning? Is your family supporting you? What's your family income like? So you, you need to convert what you're earning or what your family is earning into the British pounds equivalents. So get your annual income in a year and convert it into British pounds. And then compare what you're earning or what your family is earning to the tuition cost and the living cost of the course that you intend to undertake. So for instance, we've checked a number of courses here, the eligible courses here in the School of International Development. And you might want to check their fees, what they contain I want to check the fees and then compare these fees to um, compare these fees to exactly what you um, what you have as your annual income. So the fees here is an eighteen thousand five hundred British pounds, and this is the living expenses for one month. So you have to multiply this by twelve. Multiply this by 12 and add to 18,500. That's the total amount of money you'll be needing as an international student to study at the University of East Anglia to undertake this course. Then show how your um, personal income or your family income is a far cry from the financial demands of the course, from the tuition and the living cost demanded by the course, so show the insufficiency of your income. Then do you have like dependents as well? Like are you a parent or do you have like retired um, parents is retired? 
you have like retired parents, you have siblings who you're catering for, you're seeing through school, are you supporting your spouse? Do you have kids? Are you a single mother? Are you a single dad? Are you a widow or are you a widow? Or things like that could also help show your financial circumstances. And then in your conclusion, I probably want to say how this scholarship, this financial help, would change your life and better your community. So should um, the what you intend to do in the future and how this financial assistance will serve as a boost, as a stepping stone towards your future career, towards your future goal, and how you help use the skills you've acquired to help your community and to uplift others. That might be a very good way of concluding your essay. So let's go to the second one about um, why you should be given the scholarship. So first, you probably want to talk about your grade, your grade in school, the projects you undertook, publications if you have any, and awards that you received. You also want to talk about work experiences, volunteer experiences, particularly about what you did and what you learned from those experiences, what you did and what you learned. Then general, general achievements, community impact. What projects do you engage in in your place of work and in the volunteer experiences or activities you undertook? How many people were impacted? What difference did you make in your community exactly? For instance, did you go into the rural community to help rural farmers? Did you volunteer with the Electoral Commission to help for transparency in elections? Did you help with the local hospital? Did you help with the local school? At your workplace, did you, what did you do there that you showed leadership, that you showed innovation? I think those are the things you could brag about a little in this question. Then your career goes, what exactly do you intend to do after the course? And how would the course and the scholarship help you achieve those goals? So what do you intend to learn in the university? What skills will these courses furnish you with? And how would they help you find your future goals? Now, why are you a unique applicant? That's a very good way of concluding your essay. And to conclude, you probably want to summarize everything you've mentioned already, but in a very catchy and concise form. So both your academic um performance, your volunteer work experience, your general attributes, your achievements, your career goals, summarize them very neatly and that could make a very powerful conclusion. And that is just what you need for this scholarship. So remember you have to apply for one of these courses first and then when you get uh, an applicant number, come here and apply for this scholarship and of course write these essays as well. So remember, this scholarship is also present at the University of Sheffield and it's still open, by the way. The deadline here is on the 6th of May and the applications um, procedure is also written here. First, you have to apply for one of the eligible courses. And I think for Sheffield, you'll be called upon or invited if they think you put forward a competitive application. You'll be then invited to um, apply for the scholarship. And these are the countries eligible for this scholarship as well. These are the um, countries eligible for the scholarship as well. It's kind of similar to what we've seen already from, um, from the University of East Anglia. So we're still at the University of East Anglia. Remember I said that there are other opportunities here apart from the Allen and Nesta Ferguson Scholarship. But there are other opportunities here that I can take a look at. Other opportunities here that you can take a look at. It's a very long list here. Probably something hiding there that might catch your interest and that's you might be qualified for. Let's look at this one first as the Global Voices Scholarship. It's fully funded as well for people from the African continent interested in literature, prose, poetry, script writing, and things like that. This is the Alan Nestor we looked at initially. There are probably others here as well. This is another writing fellowship. 
this is another fully funded for those from conflict region, especially if you're from um, Lebanon. And there are others here you could look at yourself. What about for PhD, you might ask? Just go to the research studentship. And these are different PhDs still accepting application. So we could quickly click on the first one to see like the opening and closing dates and things like that. So this one is closing on the 23rd of April. Image processing pipelines and stuff, if that is your interest. And it, this is just a bachelor's degree. So you don't even need a PhD to apply for this. Um, you don't even need a master's to apply for this PhD opportunity. But the bachelor's with a 2-1, you can sufficiently apply. And it covers tuition of both home and international students and a stipend of over 16,000 UK pounds sterling. So for both domestic and international students. So you also want to keep an eye on the project to check whether it's for both students or just for home students. This is at the business school. The deadline is fast approaching. So in case you're interested in this, you just want to start working on it as soon as possible. Accounting, competition policy, and the rest of them. Applications requirements are also here. Funding is also written here, as you can see. So that's it, guys. Lots of info here. Lots of funded opportunities here. The PhD opportunities. So this one, as you can see, is just for UK students. So you want to keep an eye on the nationality eligibility criteria, if that makes sense. And that's it, guys. So there is also this final scholarship. I think I shared um, like a week ago on my Twitter page, which is um, for full tuition, also at the International Development Department, covers just full tuition. So if it is something you're interested in, I think you should also go for it. Full tuition, for both EU and international students. This is quite different from the Alan Nesta we saw earlier. And it covers just full tuition. So probably you have to raise money for your living stipend when you get this scholarship. So that's it, guys. We started with the Allen and Nesta Ferguson Scholarship at the University of East Anglia. And I demonstrated that this scholarship is also open at the University of Sheffield. So Sheffield is still accepting application for this same scholarship. And this same scholarship is also at the University of um, London School of Oriental and African Studies. The scholarship was also available at the University of Leeds, but that is closed for now. I think the deadline was in February. And then we looked at PhD opportunities as well at this university. So research opportunities, PhD opportunities at this university as well. Be mindful of those opportunities for UK students alone and the opportunities for both UK and international students. And that's it guys, I hope this was useful. In case you have questions, you can, I believe, email the school directly. But if you think it's a question, you can answer in the comment section. So leave your comment in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you. And as usual, guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you. We cannot wait to celebrate you when you eventually get one of these numerous scholarships. If you're not subscribed already, do so. And as usual, guys, I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now.